Browns seem to might might have turned some things around. Broncos might be dead. Your thoughts, AJ, on this Feel Good Friday? Well, it's definitely a, a cagey match, as uh, Gump <laughs> likes to say. I think, especially throughout, it seemed pretty cagey. But I, I think, don't you think the story of the night, the Ernest, that dude? Like, and then I, I'm seeing all the stuff about him and the DMs trying to get in what the AAF, all of this stuff. Like, what a cool story! Like everything about him, I didn't know. And, and do we know? Like. He rushed for almost 150, right? Like, yeah. Have they known this guy is this good? Uh, I think everybody in the building, I think that came out last night. A lot of his teammates were like, we've seen this guy every single day. He's electric. But in practice, especially at the running back position, you never really know, right? Because nobody's really going full go. There's thud. Maybe he has good vision. Maybe he has good instincts. But you never know whenever the lights come on, when the game actually matters, what's going to happen. Especially he's a little bit undersized, I think. So I don't think anybody fully knew what it was going to be like. But that offensive line said, hey, Let's go and eat. Let's go and do this thing. Let's go and dominate. Betonio, he got a uh, uh, false start, and they had a legal formation like three times last night. One on a punt, two on offense. So Stefanski's going to have to figure that out. But that offensive line almost taking it as a shot that maybe they weren't supposed to win or have success, I think that goes in it. But Dearness Johnson is a hell of a story, a hell of a story out of Immokalee, Florida, which is where Edron James is from. I learned a lot about that. I actually said – I just said, he's a South Florida boy, right? Yeah. yeah. South Florida boys run. Yeah. Like that, that is what South Florida guys do. They move. They make things. They're, they're gritty. They're tough. They're explosive. They're fast. They've been through a lot to get to where they are, let alone him having to beg for jobs in the AFL and now getting a chance to have his night on Thursday Night Football with LeBron James tweeting him and everything. What a story. What a superstar. But now going forward, they got two like all-pro running backs already. So does that immediately put Dearness Johnson on the trade block? You know, because that's coming well, up I mean, November 2nd. What, November 2nd, right? Yeah, that's very quick. I mean, that's very quick. What is Andrew Barry going to do with Dearness Johnson at this point? Well, when are his studs? When do both studs come back? Yeah, who knows? Right, show. When, know, do we have any idea of their timetable? Nah, I'm not 100% sure. I, last night, it didn't sound like it was going to be for too long. I think it, it, just the way Joe and Troy were talking about it. But you start thinking like, Odell Beckham, what's going to happen with Odell? Mm -hmm. uh, it looked like he hurt himself again, that shoulder, where he tried to make the catch and he landed on it. That's the same thing we're talking about with Baker, right? Like with Baker's injury, they can try to get that inflammation down. This is before we knew he had a broken humerus. But with Baker's injury, as soon as he takes one hit, that thing's... <sighs> right back into it, which is what's going to happen in football. I, I think Odell Beckham, we had similar questions, but they got a lot of decisions to make over there in Cleveland. They just got a huge win, maybe turn their season back around, but there's a lot of shit that could pop off over there.